Look, Krikatoon is a horrible Pokemon in general, and there's literally no reason to use this thing over any other option. But here's what it can do. It gets Sticky Web to slow down the opposing team, and then pretty much goes down. But if you're feeling crazy, there's always the Sweeper Krikatoon of death. At base 85 attack, it has a tiny bit of firepower, and we can double its attack stat with Sword Stance, and here's where the ability comes in. Technician boosts any moves of 60 power or less by 50%. The move Felstinger is a 50 power bug move that gets the technician boost and this raises the user's attack by 3 stages if it's able to KO the opponent with it. The problem is we're still just pretty slow, which is why we can run Trailblaze, which not only gets the technician boost, but also boosts our speed by one stage. It's almost always a miracle, but with these tools, Krikatoon can become a monster, and I'm here to give it a try. Look, sometimes you really just gotta hit him with it. And that is what our main goal is today, and it's pretty much impossible, however, I'm always up for the challenge. If you're into this kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second, and I put some real blood, sweat, and tears in making these happen. And let me tell you, Krikatoon may have never gone this hard before. Let's go ahead and jump into the battle. So when creating this team, I was like a mad scientist in the lab figuring out every possible way I could get <laughs> the, the weird Pokemon on my team to try to potentially sweep. Now it all starts with our dude Taco Bell over here. I'm working with the dual screens in the light clay to try to make everything as bulky as possible, but I also have the steel beam. Now a lot of this team revolves around like setting up a tailwind, getting up screens, and then also getting out and trying to I developed some momentum in getting my sweepers in, so I decide first to set up some Stealth Rock here as the Gudra ends up working with the Skitter Smack, which is definitely interesting. Actually, some pretty good tech for Gudra. It's probably going to be like an Assault Vest set, uh, and that's able to drop my special attack guaranteed. Now they decide to just hit me with a Hydro Pump to see how much that does, and luckily they're not carrying the Flamethrower coverage. So this allows me to set up the Light Screen here, and I'm like, you know what? While I'm out here, I might as well just go for the Reflect as well. Uh, that's going to stick around for 8 turns with that light clay like we mentioned before. And I'll tell you what, phase 1 is complete out of here. I have both screens up, I have the hazards, there's not going to be any stealth rocks to be able to stay alive in the back. And at this point, I decide, okay, I'm going to switch into Talonflame. Now, I'm working with the eject button to actually, most of the time, be able to just switch myself out after getting up a priority tailwind. However, in this situation, I figure, you know, they're obviously just going to hit me with an attack here, which is going to activate... Uh, that eject button, but that's actually fine because they drop a Draco on me and then I'm like, hey, I'm actually, I'm a head out. I eject button my ass directly out of here, which now allows me a free switch into the absolute goat. Pierre, the Krikatoon is coming in mustache, looking absolutely primed and ready. And uh, it was actually pretty solid to be able to bring myself in without taking any damage. So at this point, it's actually also even really good news that they went for the Draco Meteor because that means uh, behind the light screen with that thing at minus two special attack, uh, a Draco Meteor is not going to hurt, and that might be like the least amount of damage a Krikatoon has ever taken from a Draco Meteor before, and we are absolutely out here. I'm going for two Swords Dances. I danced once, I'm going to make myself even sharper going for a second one, and that is because I need myself, after running Calx, to be at plus four at least, uh, to take care of a, a max HP Gudra with a Fell Stinger. So, we are now able to sting this fella right to the thick thighs, and that actually one hit KOs the Gudra, which is absolutely amazing. And not only that, but we actually get basically another free Swords Dance from Fell Stinger being able to <laughs> boost our attack. I was actually supposed to get plus three, but since I was already at plus four, uh, there was only two available. So, I'm sitting at plus six with the Krikatoon at this moment in time, and now, they go into the one thing and probably the main reason why they're not really afraid of the Krikatoon, and that is this damn staple remover. This thing is extremely defensive, but you already know I have a plan. First of all, I decide to go for the Trailblaze. Now that's Technician boosted at plus six, and that does effectively nothing. But the reason why we go for it is because we want that speed boost, because now I'm able to outspeed an Infernape. However, they decide to go for the Meteor Beam, which does give them a special attack boost, uh, and then attacks the next turn, and now, it is time. They are not going to be running the Power Herb to get the attack off immediately. And behind a light screen, I was actually able to live like a flash cannon. So Krikatoon is now in a spot where I can finally bust out my secret weapon. And that is the Bull Cut, baby. I go for the Terra Ground. We are sitting at plus 6 attack and plus 1 speed. I can then go for the Terra Blast. And even though they did get a stamina boost from me hitting, me, hitting it with that Trailblaze, check this out. We're actually able to one-hit KO the Archaladon, which is probably... Krikatoon's greatest achievement of all time. So we're actually now in a fantastic spot while we do lose 
our light screen on that turn, it's fine because I did get that speed boost, which does allow me to outspeed a max speed Infernape. Now, they decide to go into the Infernape here. I do still have a Reflect Up, which does allow me to take a Mach Punch if they want to go for it. Uh, but as it turns out, they're actually going to go ahead and commit the Terra of their own. And I'm like, uh-oh, please, please do not be uh, flying or something like that. Turns out they're going to go ahead and put the candles on the head. And that is a Terra Fire, just to get some extra fire damage to ensure that they can knock out the Cricketune. However, Cricketune is zooming out here. We are faster with that Trailblaze, and a Terra Blast is going to absolutely obliterate this thing. If it was Focus Sash, it is no longer there because of the Stealth Rock. And the stars have officially aligned in such a way to where this is actually happening. And I honestly I can't actually believe it. There's so much that needs to go correctly for... Cricketune to do anything like this, but uh, I'm totally here for it. And yeah, at this point, they decide to go into the Electivire. They can no longer Terra, so there's obviously not going to be a Terra flying. I now decide to just go for a Fell Stinger because, hey, I'm a bug out here. What am I doing throwing ground at stuff? I'm just going to go for my plus six Fell Stinger. Definitely able to take care of the Electivire. And they're <laughs> down to two Pokemon left. I'm actually surprised that this person hasn't just clicked the run button at this point, but you gotta admit, the Cricketune going this crazy, you kinda just gotta let this thing, you know, see it through. I'm just gonna go for the ground Terra Blast here. It's gonna be my highest damage uh, against the Rhyperior, and that is gonna actually just one-hit KO a Rhyperior as well, because Cricketune, listen, you do not wanna mess with the Cricketune. I don't know how many times I gotta tell you guys. I think we get the benefit of, like, this being a sweeping Cricketune, just because most of the time, or at least if any time people are running Cricketune, it's almost always just going to be like a sticky web lead and never an offensive threat. So we get a little bit of the element of surprise on our side, and that goes a long way. Their final Pokemon is going to be Lucario, and that thing gets Terra Blasted into the fucking Shadow Realm. And that is going to be the end of the match. I definitely did not expect that to go this well for Cricketune. Um, however, I will say there was a lot of bloopers in getting this to actually happen. Never expected it to happen this well, but Cricketune shows them who's boss and that's gonna be the end of that one. Now, this may just be the most fun team I've made. So, you know, I had to hit you with another battle and this is actually another really good match. And hopefully we can show off a little bit more about what the team is supposed to do in support of our little fellas here. And if you do enjoy, as always, please click that like button. YouTube really likes it when you do. And it's, uh, it's just a good idea to click the button. Now, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so this time my opponent is actually going to end up leading off with the Umbreon. And honestly, most people know how I feel about Umbreon. This thing is just bulky. It always makes games real annoying. But as a lead, I don't really know what this thing wants to do. And Bronzong's like, I'm just going to... Just gonna follow the script here, set up my Stealth Rock and be on my way. Turns out they're actually gonna go for a turn one Calm Mind, and that uh, is actually pretty scary. Now, obviously I have the Cricketune to hit this thing physically. Uh, the problem becomes that Cricketune needs stat boost to be able to pretty much do anything to this because uh, Umbreon's extremely bulky. I'm like, okay, I could probably set up a Reflect here, but it's actually in my best interest to potentially switch out of here. Now, I decide I'm actually gonna go ahead and bring in the Plusle. You may be thinking, seems like a bad idea. Plusl is obviously not going to be able to hit this thing on a special side, especially with a Calm Mind. However, I figure they probably go for a second Calm Mind, which they do. And that is exactly what we're looking for here, because Pistol is about to show you who's boss. This thing uh, is the secondary weird sweeper on the team. And my dude comes with a nice little tool in the form of Encore. I can then obviously outspeed, go for the Encore, and say, hey, I like that Calm Mind so much, buddy. I'm going to need you to... Yeah, go ahead and show me how you do that again. So they're now sitting at plus three special defense and special attack. And uh, while the Umbreon is starting to set up all crazy, now they're stuck in that, which gives me a little bit of breathing room to try to uh, assess the situation and figure out an answer. Now, my exact answer is, of course, going to be going into the Cricketune, because why would it not be? Cricketune is the answer to pretty much the world's problems, but most importantly, the Umbreon. So... Uh, they do decide to stay in. They're like, okay, that's fine. I'm just going to continue to go for these Calm Mines. And I do know that I have one free turn here to try to get the Cricketune to set up before the Encore ends. If the Encore ends, we're going to have a bad time. But I decide with my ballin' ass mustache to go for a nice little Swords Dance. You already know the drill. Cricketune's sharp as hell out here. Gets me to a nice little plus two. It turns out uh, the Umbreon actually has a Mirror Herb. So it copies my attack boost. Not that it really matters, but... Uh, they're still stuck in Calm Mind Limbo over here, but he's just in purgatory, watching this Cricketune set up in, from him, in front of him, thinking, oh, uh-oh, this is, uh, 
Not ideal, because they probably thought I was going to stick you up, but instead, I'm now at plus two, and you already know what that means. A Felstinger with a Technician boost at plus two should be able to take care of the Umbreon, and it does. So Crisis averted, Umbreon taken care of by the Cricketoon. Not only that, but we also get the Drastic Attack boost, bringing us to a nice little plus five attack, which is absolutely amazing. What is not amazing, however, is the fact that Driftblim is a really good answer to my Cricketoon. So you may have noticed I'm actually working with a little bit of a different set here on Female Pierre, where I'm actually going with the Terra Water, and I also have Endure to activate a Salic Berry. Now, I decided to go for the Terra Water because, listen, if I have Cricketune at plus 5 attack, you better bet my ass is not switching out, and I'm going to make use of whatever this thing can possibly do. The Terra Water is here so that, obviously, I don't get hit with like a super effective Air Slash. Uh, or acrobatics. I don't really know what this drip limb wants to do, but I decided to just go for the trailblaze. And with that, uh, with that boost, I'm actually able to look like it's close to a two-hit KO. Um, but that actually activates the red card, and that is kind of annoying. But also, like, all right, I'm just gonna tuck Pierre back in the old pocket for later and see if I can make something happen. It really does suck to get red carded out here until I realize the Will-O-Wisp was definitely coming, and uh, it actually kind of saves me there because Cricketune being burnt. Would have put me in a spot where obviously I don't knock it out with my next Trailblaze. And uh, Bronzong does get drawn in here to be the Burn Fodder, which is actually honestly fine with me. Because uh, at this point I can just like set up a, set up a screen here and just kind of do my chillin' Bronzong shit. Now they decide to go for the Hex. Um, and I figure with the red card this thing is probably working with the Unburdened ability. So when they lose their item they get the doubled speed. And this thing is extremely fast at this point. Uh, as I take that opportunity to set up a nice little screen as uh, Bronzong, it looks like I'm probably going to go down to uh, the next attack here. But they actually end up going for the Strength Sap. And this is honestly the main reason why Driftblim is such an absolute menace, especially with Unburdened sets and the ability to go for Strength Sap against things like physical attackers. You get so much health back um, and you also you can just outspeed Will-O-Wisp stuff and just stay alive and just have fucking cream cheese on your head and be annoying. But uh, they also end up showing me they have the stockpile. That makes this thing infinitely worse. I'm like, oh, Jesus, now they're starting to boost this thing up. And uh, Cricketune is definitely going to have <laughs> a hard time against this thing. But I decide to go for the Steel Beam. Not only does that do a nice little amount of chip damage, but it also takes care of my Bronzong. Now, the reason why it's actually nice to run that set on this team is because in setting up screens, I want to try to maximize turns. So just knocking myself out allows me a free pivot into whatever I like. And that actually sets me up in a pretty nice spot to be able to bring in the plus hole. Now, of course, I can go for Encore shenanigans. I decide, however, just to go for a Thunderbolt. I feel like with only one special defense boost, I should still grab the knockout here. However, they're actually going to go for the Terra. Now, they go for the Terra normal, which is definitely just there to block Ghost-type attacks, but it also is going to reduce the damage from my Thunderbolt. It's also actually faster because of the fact that it activated that Unburden. So they go for the Strength Sap just to get some health back. And uh, while I don't have a lot of physical attack stat, it doesn't get a lot of health back. But what that does do is allows them to live the next Thunderbolt, which is actually quite threatening. And I'm like, okay, well, this thing does outspeed me here. Luckily, they end up going for another stockpile. They probably should have gone for the Hex here, which I think probably would have been close to knocking out uh, the Plusle. But they instead stockpile. Thunderbolt, luckily, is just barely enough to be able to knock this thing out. And down goes the Drift Blim, which is a huge defensive and offensive threat, to be honest. And also, hey, we take down their Terra with it. So they no longer have the ability to Terra. And Plusle is able to grab a nice little kill out here. So I'm just, listen, I'm just a little electric-ass mouse, and they decide to bring in a Ground Dragon. And uh, that is not ideal if you're a Plusle. So I'm like, okay, I can predict an Earthquake here at least, and I can switch into Talonflame, who... Luckily, who should be in a position to try to get up a nice little uh, Tailwind and then red card my ass out of here. However, they make a nice play. Go for the Rock Tomb, uh, which is mainly just there to, I assume, just drop speed. However, that does hit me four times effectively. And uh, with the Reflect Up, at least, I'm able to live that. And sadly, it does activate my Eject button. And uh, while it does kind of suck in this position, it does at least allow me, you know, a free switch into something without having to take any damage. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go into the Vaporeon. Vaporeon, this thing's on the team to kind of hold everything together. I am extremely bulky on this with the Wish support, uh, but also I have the ability for a nice little pivot with the flip turn. Now, they decide to actually go for the Dragon Rush and end up missing, and uh, bold move running the Dragon Rush there. However, I do overpredict. I figured the Ice Beam was obvious. 
So I try to go for the pivot to grab momentum. However, now I'm just looking at this Garchomp thinking, all right, I don't really know exactly what to do, but I do know that behind the screens, Krikatoon with the Water Terra should be able to take attacks here. And I'm like, I'm here to try to get Krikatoon to do stuff, and that is what we are gonna do. Now, they decide to go for the Rock Tomb here uh, to try to limit my speed a bit. Does get the speed drop, and this thing's actually a little bit annoying here. I go for the Swords Dance, and I was slower even before the Rock Tomb uh, dropped my speed, so I'm kind of in a position here where Krikatoon's probably not going to be able to get snowballing here, but damn it, I'm going to try. They now go for the Dragon Rush. Behind the Reflect, Krikatoon takes it amazingly well, um, which is awesome, and this does allow me to go for the Trailblaze. I want to get that speed boost because um, I'm figuring after a Sword Stance, it might be a two-hit KO. It turns out it is, in fact, not a two-hit KO, and my Reflect wears away, so I'm not faster than this thing. However, what I can do is go for the Endure. Now, what that does is guarantees that I can take the next attack. They go for the Earthquake, which they probably should have clicked before. Brings me down to that one HP, but most importantly, it is actually gonna put me in range to activate my Salic Berry, which is very important in me being able to at least outspeed this Garchomp. So, I get that Salic Berry boost, I have a Trailblaze, and I do have the minus one from the Rock Tomb, where I'm feeling like I'm actually in a spot to knock this thing out with a Stab Felstinger. And it actually does knock out the Garchomp. I have now killed two Pokemon in one match with Felstinger, so I get myself a nice little plus three attack boost. I am now sitting at plus two speed, thinking, okay, there's not much that can happen here other than priority. Now, they decide to go into Lucario. At this point, I kind of forgot that extreme speed was a thing, and I was like, oh wait, yeah, he's definitely just gonna click extreme speed. I can't really switch into anything, but I decide to go for another Endure, just to be like, hey, I know, I know what you're gonna be doing here, buddy. You're gonna extreme speed me. He does, and it's just kind of funny to see an attack do no damage when I'm sitting at one HP. Pierre is just hanging on by a damn thread out here, and uh, it's quite scary. Now, I realize I could probably switch into Vaporeon here as I'm actually like a max defensive set, and this if it's just fully physical Lucario, it really can't do much to me. So I'm like, you know what, Pierre, you're not going down yet, buddy. <laughs> you probably don't have much late game value, but I'm saving it for later because I can switch into the Vaporeon here, and extreme speed does literally nothing to me. The, life, or the leftovers is going to bring me back up real healthy, and Ripple is absolutely chilling out here to the point where I really feel like this Lucario probably doesn't want to stay in here. However, I just decide to go for the Scald because it's kind of my safest bet. They don't have a lot of switch-ins to that, uh, as they do just Drain Punch to get some decent damage, but also some health back. I then Scald, which is a two-hit KO. Sadly, I do not get the burn. It always seems like whenever I click Scald, it's like a 10% chance to burn, and when everybody clicks it against me, it's a 75% chance. But uh, at this point, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go for the flip turn. They know that a Scald kills here, and they know that they're also not doing anything to me. So I can flip turn, predicting the Sceptile to come in and then get a spot where I can bring pretty much any answer in against the Sceptile. So they do bring this thing in. Flip turn works perfectly. While we don't do any damage, uh, it does just allow us a nice little pivot here. And this is going to bring me in a spot where I have a couple of different options I could go into. I decide... Talonflame is definitely my best bet, mostly just because I naturally outspeed this thing, and not a lot of my team has really much in terms of damage that I can do to Sceptile. Uh, so while this Talonflame is mostly just here to set up Tailwinds and Pivots, I do in fact have the ability to go for that Brave Bird. They do just stay in here. I'm able to take care of the Sceptile nicely, and that's a, that's a pretty big threat out of the way, because at this point, I'm really feeling like Plusle might be a win condition here, looking at what they have left. So. Uh, Talonflame does still stay alive after the recoil damage, which is nice, as now they decide to bring in the Charizard. So, Charizard's in a spot here where it probably lives a Brave Bird, and uh, I'm just actually going to end up going for the Tailwind here. I know that I'm going to be faster. The Tailwind is going to allow four turns of basically my entire team to be faster uh, than the rest of theirs, so I go for that Tailwind as they do decide to finish me off with the Dragon Pulse. So, that takes care of Talonflame, but I did exactly what I needed to do and taking care of the Sceptile, and also setting up the Tailwind, because now it's time for fake-ass Mouse Pikachu to come in, and uh, while I'm not normally able to outspeed a Charizard behind a Tailwind, obviously I can. They also do not have any Terras left, so they cannot change their type here, and Pistol is about to show why this thing is the absolute GOAT. I can outspeed, go for that T-Bolt, um, and that is going to finish off the Charizard. So, that is amazing. I think it was not switching out, regardless. There was Stealth Rock up. Um, and it was pretty much wasted at that point, but the Tailwind does enable the Plusle to be the absolute beast that this thing is, and now the final Pokemon is going to be the Lucario. So, 
Lucario comes in, it does have the option to click the extreme speed, which I do not believe kills. It's probably a close roll here. However, I just decide to go for the T-Bolt. They do not extreme speed, and Plusle is able to finish off the game for us in a pretty stylish fashion. So that is going to do it, and I thought that was just a super fun match. This team is incredibly goofy, and most of the time it will not work. However, when the circumstances are correct, it is pretty hilarious to see it in action. So thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support. For real, you guys are uh, absolutely amazing, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.